What's up, y'all? This is Rock Land. Today on Passport Kings, we're going over the um, marina in Dubai and we're gonna see what all the hot spots look like. Engage. I'm Rock Land. I travel the globe making videos and recommending destinations. Join me so we can discover, preview, and book your next vacation. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. Subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all the other videos you may like. A trip to Dubai is overwhelming. High rises, yachts, and fancy cars for as far as the eye could see. The UAE went overboard with everything and they are still building at a fever's pitch. This must be the biggest, most beautiful city on earth. And for a city slicker such as myself to say that, it must be true. All the food has been great, it's super clean, the people are friendly, and they have Uber. The airplane ride there took just under 14 hours, but again, it seemed much shorter. Their work week is from Sunday to Thursday. I meant to pick up some liquor from Duty Free at the airport but forgot about it while searching for the exit. Missing the liquor store at the airport was a big mistake. Unfortunately, you can't buy liquor from a typical liquor store because it is illegal to sell bottles of liquor to tourists. Residents have a red card that lets them buy liquor and tourists are stuck to hotel lobbies and bars. That was a major bummer for me, but once we found and drank at a bar on a marina called Pier 7, I got over it. I met some black people there from New York who said they lived out there full time. They were down to earth and said that they did not regret moving there one bit. Looking around you'll see hijabs and gutras all over the place, as well as things you would not expect to see in a city that recognizes religion so much that religious songs are sang from loudspeakers across the city at certain times. Some of the tourists were dressed scantily clad. Then there were women of the night that were selling their goods in front of some stores. There was a 24-hour supermarket, fast food joints like McDonald's and KFC were prevalent, and stores had sliced ham on the shelves. But most surprisingly, I saw a black gay couple holding hands walking down the street. In America, I wouldn't have thought nothing of those things. But on the same street where so many people were wearing their holy outfits and obviously very religious to the Muslim faith, it was quite a shock. Even cooler, <laughs> While I was there, I witnessed and lived through a sandstorm, which, which is an experience I don't think I will ever experience anywhere else. And thank goodness I looked at Mission Impossible Rogue Nation because I don't think I would have known what the hell was going on. Dubai's extraordinary presence in the world is very new in terms of history. In the 20th century, the Maktoum family made Dubai into a successful port for imports and exports. The market on the Diara side of the creek was the largest on the coast with 350 shops and steady businessmen visitors. By the 1930s, Dubai's population was nearly 20,000, a quarter of whom were expatriates. In the 1950s, everything just grew potentially bigger. His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoum decided to have a waterway dredged. It was an ambitious, costly, and visionary project. Essentially, they were building a marina in the desert. The move resulted in increased volumes of cargo handling in Dubai. I guess it strengthened Dubai's position as a major trading and re-export hub, and I think it launched the idea that they could build pretty much anything they wanted and the lavish ideas of this city begin to take form. Many of the people I talked to say they remember when Dubai was nothing but a desert. The last 15 years for them was like watching a science fiction movie. And with all the cranes steadily going to this day, 
there seems to be no signs of it stopping. Then when oil was discovered in 1966, Sheikh Rashid utilized the oil revenue to spur infrastructure development, schools, hospitals, roads, and modern telecommunications networks in Dubai. The pace of development was overboard. A new port and terminal building were built at Dubai International Airport. A runway extension that could accommodate any type of aircraft was implemented. A free zone was created around the port. Dubai quickly became a business and tourism hub for a region that stretches from Egypt to the Indian subcontinent and from South Africa to what are now called the CIS countries. In the early 1970s, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and five other cities in the area joined to create the United Arab Emirates, and it became one of the richest countries in the world. But to make it better, in the early 90s, Dubai started to emerge as a major international quality tourism destination. Dubai's beaches are Jumeirah Beach, which runs alongside Corniche Street and is close to the Burj Al Arab Hotel. Al-Mamzar Beach, which resembles the water of a closed and peaceful lake. Jabu Ali Beach, as it is adjacent to Dubai's free zone and is known for its prestigious golf clubs, luxury hotels and resorts, as well as being adjacent to the Palms with its luxury residential complexes. Dubai is now a city that has unmatchable hotels, remarkable architecture, and world-class entertainment and sporting events. The beautiful Burj Al Arab Hotel, which is shaped like a boat sail, is the only hotel in the world with a seven-star rating. Dubai wants to say they are the biggest and best of everything. The Burj Khalifa, which used to be called the Burj Dubai, is the tallest building in the world. The tallest block has the tallest residential apartments in the world and they are competing to this day by adding floors to try to outdo one another. They have a metro train system that is driverless. People regularly sell along the marina on yachts eating lunch or dinner. They skydive over the marina, jetpacking like your Iron Man, eat in restaurants that suspend you in mid-air, then there are two palm islands which are man-made islands for exclusive condos, The Palm Jumeria ends at the mouth of the Atlantis Dubai Hotel, which has rooms underwater where your windows look out into the ocean. And it has the Palm Jebel Ali, which is almost the same thing but twice the size. And these spectacles are so big that they can be seen from space. All Ubers are super fancy with the rule that the car model must be a Lexus or a more luxurious car like BMWs or Mercedes. The architecture of some of the buildings seem to defy gravity and are skyscraping masterpieces. The mall is said to take eight hours to walk through and they have unmatched amusement parks. We took a 45 minute drive that ended off with a doom bashing experience to meet and ride camels. And that's not even half of what it has to offer. You really need to be there for about a month to experience everything. Dubai is a city unlike anything I've ever laid my eyes on in past travels. It is a city of pomp and circumstances. There are many reasons why people travel and Dubai has a way of fulfilling all of those needs and then takes it up a notch. This episode is brought to you by what used to be called travel hacking, but is correctly named award stacking. Save thousands of dollars on flights while rapidly improving your credit. Personally, this system has changed my travel life. Right now, the system is over 50% off. Click the link above and start traveling nonstop for so much less. Whether you're looking to have a destination wedding on the beach or even in the desert, or if you're looking for the perfect location for a bachelor or bachelorette party on your own private yacht, maybe seclusion for yourself, a religious getaway, shopping, 
something for adrenaline junkies, or fine dining, you should get to Dubai as soon as you can. The government of Dubai considers tourism as one of the pillars of the economy and seeks to attract foreign investment. Some will say that it's not an authentic experience of the Muslim and Middle Eastern world because of its tolerance to secular cultures, but if you're looking for the best in the world of all things, Dubai has it. Yo, when I'm abroad, I put a lot of pictures up on Instagram at Passport King. When you see those pictures, please feel free to ask me any questions about the location that I'm in. Hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions in the video I make about that destination. Subscribe now for future travel videos and thanks for watching. All right, so everyone says that uh, it's pretty strict out here in Dubai, but I, from what I've seen so far, it seems to be pretty liberal. So make sure you just have a great time and follow any rules that you see. But uh, like I said, make sure you have the best time of your life, like a king, a passport king.